Hey, I'm Spencer and welcome back to my MS YouTube channel where I post about multiple sclerosis, both my experiences with the disease and just things about MS, like things that are relevant to people with MS. And this entire video is about McArdle's sign. All right, so uh, first of all, you gotta realize that there are a bunch of these signs for MS. And it's a little bit confusing. Uh, just based on the name, it can seem like they are a definitive sign that you have the disease. But uh, MS signs don't quite work that way. Uh, I posted another video a while back about the five MS signs. And these five signs have been long established, long known as signs uh, used in the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis and as a way of understanding multiple sclerosis, but not as definitive diagnostic tools. So anyway, I posted about those five signs. They've been around a long time. You can check out my other video if you're interested in them. But there's a new one. There's this new sign recently discovered actually called McArdle sign. And I realized that if you look up videos about McArdle sign on YouTube, you get really kind of complicated medical descriptions. It's a little bit confusing. And if you search the web, it's the same deal. Kind of confusing medical discourse and jargon about McArdle signs. So in this video, I'm just gonna break it down and make it really simple so you can understand what McArdle sign is. All right, so I did my reading on McArdle sign and realized there's actually not a whole lot published about it. There are a couple papers and some explanatory videos and talks and lectures and things like that. But here's the basic deal. Uh, in the 1980s, uh, 1987 in fact, a patient presented some kind of wacky symptoms and this physician O'Neill wrote up a paper based on this one patient. So it wasn't like a big study or anything, but he wrote up a paper and he proposed this term McArdle sign for what this guy had going on. So here's the deal. Uh, this guy had multiple sclerosis and in order to walk, like he couldn't walk, he was, you know, messed up by the disease, but in order to walk, he had to throw his head back and it would kind of like loosen up his spinal cord or whatever, and he could walk. Probably not perfectly. There's not a whole account of like the quality of his gait or anything like that, but basically if his head was anywhere down in, this is called flexion, if it was like down in flexion or even straight, he, he couldn't walk. He couldn't like enervate his muscles and nerves and everything. But if he threw his head back, he kind of loosened up and he could walk. So that guy was in rough shape. And this Dr. O'Neill proposed this idea of McArdle sign, proposing this link between multiple sclerosis and this kind of like position of your head. Okay, it's starting to rain, so I gotta go inside for the rest of this video. Okay, that's better. Okay, fast forward to 2018, 2019, and there is a follow-up study, like a full-on study of a bunch of people with multiple sclerosis, and then like all medical research, there is a control group. So I think in the study there was a group of people with MS, some people with some other kind of uh, disorders that were sort of, you know, they manifest in similar ways, you know, like people couldn't walk around perfectly or whatever, but they didn't have MS. And then there was a control group. And this study, I think it was led by this guy, this Dr. Weinschenker, Brian Weinschenker, but he might've just been one of the researchers. Anyway, the basic deal with Weinschenker's study was that he took a bunch of people with MS and he had them do this neck flexion thing. So they would flex their head down and at the same time as they flex down, he would, man, now it's really starting to rain. At the same time as they flex their head down, like put their head down into flexion, he was testing the strength of their fingers. So it's kind of like this, I'll show you. So basically he's got this device, like this technical device. It's not the side of a barn, but anyway, he would have them push with their fingers and flex at the same time. And then the device they were pushing against would measure the strength, the severity of their pushing. What did he find? Basically, Weinshanker found that if you've got MS, at least in his small group, it's like 30 people or something like that, that small group of people, when they were in flexion, like when their head was down, they had less power in their hand, just less power. Like the system of connections between their brain and their muscles and their arm was being impeded. It's kind of getting screwed up by the flexion of the neck. So that's what he found. And he proposed, he was like, you know what? The original thing from the 80s was legit. 
and there's this thing called McCardle sign. But this is the important thing to realize. He's not saying that if you're not diagnosed with MS, you know, like you just think you might have MS, all you need to do is have this test of your neck flexion and your finger strength. He's not saying that. It's not like this is a definitive test of MS. It is a sign. And that's why I pointed you to that earlier video that I posted before. It's a sign of MS. It's like a, I don't even know how doctors think about it, but it's kind of like an indicator. And he thinks that it could have some clinical relevance. So what does that mean? A neurologist is checking you out, you're at their doctor, and you know they go through a neurological exam, you know, they check your gait, how you're walking, they check your muscle strength, they check your eyes, how you're tracking their finger, they do all the neurological tests, and they might check what happens if you flex your neck. You flex it down and maybe you lose some power in your limbs, they'd be like, oh, you know, that's part of the story. So anyway, that's McCardle's sign. I really hate the way that things like this are not always clear to people if they search online. You know, you look online and you want to find some information and all you find are these like crazy medical descriptions that are confusing and hard to figure out. It doesn't seem to me that McCardle's sign has really been vetted and like tested. There are a couple contemporary studies, 2018, 2019, small sample sets of people. So it's not like one of those things that's been around 50 years and everyone knows it's legit. Uh, but it does seem like it's getting some more traction. All right, I gotta get in the house before the barn washes away. Thanks for checking out the video and I appreciate your support.